Welcome, everybody, to the Freelance Network podcast, a podcast by content creators for content creators. So last time we got to interview Joe Petrelli, which was a lot of fun. But this time we have a different guest. But first, Cassie would like to address everybody because Will and I forgot. So Yeah. So last episode, if you're a returning, you know, listener. If you're a fan. If you're a fan. (laughs) (laughs) um, They forgot to mention why I wasn't in the last podcast. Um, So we have a very small budget here. And uh, that means we can only afford three microphones. So um, whenever we have an interview with a guest, we're going to have to leave one of the hosts out. It'll be like a rotation. Yeah. So last week, I was the one that was left out. So I directed the episode. But this week, we left Will out. Yeah. So so we're just going to interview our new guest. This is Jordan Ellis. Hello. Welcome. Yes. Thank you for being here, Jordan. Of course. Thanks for having me. Yes. So we know Jordan because Jordan works here at Stockton University. So why don't you tell, we'll we'll get into like your backstory, but tell everybody like what your job is first. Okay. So I have a very long title for no reason. That's Uh, amazing. Yeah. I am the liaison for communication studies and academic support here at Stockton University. I did not know that title. Yeah. That That is amazing. And then Mike's is even longer because his has a senior at the end of it. Nice. Um, Yeah, so uh, liaison for communication studies and academic support. Uh, Basically, that means I'm student support, tech support, faculty support for the communication studies department here at Stockton. Well, you certainly have supported Cassie and I quite a lot on our endeavors. So (laughs) so that's what led to this. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, I know Jordan because she worked with us on our internship that I mentioned the last, like, two podcasts that I was on. (laughs) But uh, she was like hands-on director when we didn't want to direct and stuff like that <laughs> yeah. so she was definitely <laughs> like weeks, the like, support yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. just drag them a little <laughs> no that's one of the main parts of my job here is running that uh community tv partners internship at stockton with a group of interns every semester so well we'll definitely get into that but i wanted to start off so you went to rowan I did. Which obviously is a different school than anybody that's been on this podcast has yeah. went to so far <laughs> so why don't you tell us a little bit about that and like your experience in their program yeah so Before Rowan, even, I went to community college for two years. I went to Atlantic Cape Community College, where I was a communication studies major. Hey, yo. Yeah. So (laughs) um, from there, I wasn't sure if I was going to go into communication studies at Rowan or if I was going to do radio, TV, film. I really wasn't set on what I wanted to do. Um, But after going on a tour of Rowan and checking everything out and seeing what they had to offer, the TV studio and everything, um, I decided to do radio, TV, film there. Um, So I graduated in December 2017, um, and because of how much um, coursework I did at community college, I was only there for a year and a half, and I only did production courses the entire time I was there. Yeah, so it was very production-oriented, and it was the most stressful year and a half of my life. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I did, too, though. Like, Mm -hmm. when I transferred, I only had production courses left. Yeah. So I literally just did that, too. So I get it. Yeah. So technically, I was a radio, television, and film major, but my concentration was television. Okay. Um, So they gave you the opportunity to kind of focus your classes on which path you wanted to do Mm -hmm. while still having a degree in all three. So I had to take the basics of, um, like... uh, film and radio like I took sound communication um an audio editing class um and then I took film one um realized I didn't like either of those very quickly and then (laughs) stuck with tv for the rest of my courses there so I took um tv production tv production two live event production um and I think that's it for the big production classes yeah yeah and then you said you did an internship while you were there too right yes so Um, my second semester I interned at SNJ today, um, which isn't even a news station anymore. (laughs) Um, now it's just an online news station, but it used to be on Comcast, I believe, um, in the South Jersey area. Mm -hmm. So I would go out every single day with a reporter and help them film B-roll for their packages, interview, um, whoever we're interviewing that day, um, and really get hands-on experience in the field with reporters and then help them make the packages for the news that night. So I'd be there twice a week from 9 to 5.30. Um, I would leave as soon as I got into the office with a reporter to go film a story that day, film the whole thing, come back, help edit it, and then do the show. So oh, wow. I was an audio operator for the actual newscast. I was a camera op. They let me do a little bit of everything. Um, because since it was such a small news station, 
the interns were a huge part of it. Like yeah. I was, I wasn't just filing paperwork and getting coffee and stuff. Like it was the most hands-on experience I could have gotten at an internship. I think that's great. Yeah. yeah. I, I think uh, a lot of people that I've talked to that actually work in news say that's like how it is like mm-hmm. working at a news station. So it was actually, it must've been really nice to have mm-hmm. that experience right off the bat. Right. So. And it was great because I got a lot of experiences there that I didn't necessarily get in the classroom at Rowan. Um, so like, that's like the whole point of an internship. Right, right. It's supposed so to enhance at education. At Rowan, most of it was in studio, but I got to do a lot of on the field work um, at my internship that I didn't really get the chance to do at Rowan. I did do some, um, but not to the extent that I was doing at my internship. Yeah. And same with the positions that I got to do during a newscast. So in my TV production class at Rowan, we did get to try all the positions and everything, but I mostly focused on producing and directing. So I didn't really do audio or camera op or stuff because I was doing directing and producing. So at the internship, it gave me a chance to try those other positions out and really get used to doing them, which has really helped me here. Um, Because especially um, audio op here, we do it the exact same way that S&J did. Um, writing our levels and everything so um, having the experience somewhere else and bringing it in here really helped with that that's awesome yeah so then now after Rowan tell us take us through your journey of how how you got here because there was a couple stops along the way yeah yeah there were a few stops Uh, so I graduated December 17 January 8th 18 I got my first job so within a month less than a month I got my first job that's impressive yeah I I don't know how it happened I just it was really luck it was like I was stalking indeed.com and everything (laughs) and just applying to everything I could possibly find um so it was a freelance reporter job at Marlton TV which is another TV station that isn't really a thing anymore (laughs) uh, which is why I'm not there anymore But it was um, an online news station for Marlton and that area of New Jersey. Um, So I basically did the exact same thing that I did at my internship, um, except I had to come up with the stories myself and write them and contact everyone, do all of the legwork for it. Um, So, I mean, I only did it for a couple months and it was freelance. So it wasn't an everyday thing. It was like two or three times a week. I'd reach out to a local person like, for example, for Valentine's Day, I reached out to a local florist to spotlight them on the show and make a whole package about them, what they're offering for Valentine's Day, um, and then it would go on the news site for people to see and share online um, and things like that. I also did it right when the Eagles were going to the Super Bowl. Go Birds. So, yes, Go Birds. So I did a lot of... Uh, <laughs> we're sitting with a Jets so fan sorry. right yeah, now. No, I'm a Jets fan, and you guys just slaughtered us yesterday, but it's fine. I mean, hey, it's Go fine. Birds. No, to be fair, I know nothing about football, so I don't even know if they won yesterday. So they they did. Okay, well, <laughs> <By a lot. laughs> if yeah. you didn't tell me that, I would not have known. So, <laughs> um, but I was the freelance reporter leading up to the Super Bowl. So for two weeks straight leading up to the Super Bowl, I highlighted different people in Marlton who were wow. the biggest Eagles fans. That is really so I'd cool. go to people's houses and they would show me why they were the biggest Eagles fan. So I went to one house and the guy had a giant Eagles RV that he brought to every single Eagles game to tailgate. Um, and it was like his baby. And he was bringing it all the way up to the Super Bowl. He got tickets to the Super Bowl. Wow. Yeah. So um, that is so cool. He was like crying. He was so passionate. It was kind of an awkward interview because I didn't <laughs> understand why someone was crying over football. But I mean, um, I get it Ka- now. <laughs> Cassie's looking at me. Yeah. <laughs> because we watched the Super Bowl together and I was a baby. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, now he cried like instantly as soon as they like announced that they won. He was just crying. Well, yeah. I get it now. Yeah. Yeah. After doing that for two weeks and finding all the different people and hearing everyone's story and seeing how many people cried over the Eagles, I get it. Yeah. But that was my first one. And I was like, why is he crying? Like, <laughs> like what is going on right now? <laughs> um, like he's having a moment. I should not be here for this. Right, right. <laughs> um, and it was very personal because I got to go to people's houses and do it. So it's yeah. not like I met them at a coffee shop. It's I went inside their homes. They showed me all of their Eagles stuff. That's cool. Um, and it was really cool. Um, but I only did that for a few months because I got other jobs. And I all realized very quickly that reporting was not really what I wanted to do. Yeah. Well, so then where did you end up next after that? Um, let's see. Where did I end up after that? Okay, so after that, um, I went to Trenton Thunder, which is uh, the Yankees minor league baseball team. Yeah, the double A uh, team. Mm-hmm. I think it's triple A. Maybe double A. Oh, I think they're double okay. A. But I maybe I don't know where I was working. This, so. <laughs> uh, baseball is very complicated to understand. Yeah. There, there's like 40 rounds in the draft. So, yeah. you know. 
anyway, a that's excessive. where I was. Double A, triple A. It was the Trenton Thunder. Yeah. So um, I got hired as a uh, game day production. So I was mostly a camera operator, but uh, I did get to do instant replay and directing at one point. Um, but I didn't stay there very long because of health reasons and things like that. Um, and it was also like an hour drive. Um, but I took that job because I really wanted to work for the Phillies, like really bad. And I was like, this is going to be a great stepping stone for me to get to the Phillies. So that's why I took the job. It was minimum wage. I was working with a lot of college, I mean, high school kids doing the same position as me because they, they didn't need anything crazy for camera ops. They just needed someone who knew how to point a camera. Yeah. Um, yeah. But because I had experience, I got to do the um, handheld camera, which is very cool. I got to go like under, like in the dugout and stuff and film, which was really cool. Um, But I took that position, the hour drive, minimum wage, because I was like, I want to work for the Phillies. And this is a great stepping stone to that. Um, A week after getting hired at Trenton Thunder, I got hired at the Phillies. (laughs) Yeah, so you're, I really you're didn't like, even need it. Honestly, <laughs> you're like every college kid's dream of like, I graduated early and yeah. then I'm just getting job after job. Like, Well, technically I didn't graduate early. Technically I graduated a semester late because I was at County College for three years. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I was a semester behind, which is why I like booked through Rowan as But I mean, I you still yeah, made you it through. Yeah, but you saved that university money. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. still in quite a bit of debt. But like, but, yeah. and then like you were saying, like Triton Thunder, you're like, great stepping stone to the Phillies. Yeah. A week in, yeah. Phillies. <laughs> Literally a week in. I mean, like, I not the, saying you yeah. don't deserve it, because like after working yeah. with you, you 100% oh, do. You. <laughs> Like, you know what you're doing, and you've always been so helpful, too. Oh, but good. Yeah. You saved my ass a few times. So. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, this this podcast is explicit now. Oh, sorry. I said the A word. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> saved your butt. Thanks. Yes. Yeah. Saved my butt. Yep. Yeah. Um, but tell us about the Phillies. Yeah, so I got hired at the Phillies because of my professor at Rowan. Um, he's the one of the freelance directors for the Phillies. Um so when I graduated, I stayed on his good side, like hardcore. He's actually the one who got me into Trenton Thunder. Um, he got me the connection at the other place I was at. So he's my, – my television professor at Rowan is really the person who got me where I am. He was the stepping stone who pushed me and got me where I needed to be. Um, so um, I reached out to him while I was a reporter, and I was like, hey, I hate reporting. I really want to work in live events. Like, how can I do this? Uh, emailed me back instantly and said, I have a meeting with the Phillies tomorrow. I'll give them your name. Send me your resume. We'll get this done. So I did. And then two weeks later, I got an interview and got hired a couple days later. Um, So I was doing, I got hired originally as a graphics operator. So the person who puts the headshots, the lower thirds, um, birthdays, sponsors, all that stuff up on the Jumbotron at Citizens Bank Park. Um, but because how it works at the Phillies, when you get hired as a new employee, you don't start off doing every single game. I didn't even get scheduled for my first game until May, I think. And it was only like two games in May. So when I got the schedule out, I was like, oh, that's weird. Like I thought I was gonna be working a lot more than that, but they split it between so many people because it is freelance. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's not a full-time position. However, when I got hired, they were like, hey, we have this new thing at Citizens Bank Park opening called The Yard, which is a kid's wiffle ball field. And in that wiffle ball field, there is a mini Fanavision board. It's just like a smaller version of it. Um, And they were like, we need a camera operator and we need a director for down there. Are you up for it? So I was like, yes, absolutely. Anything I could do to help them, I was like, yeah, I'm there. Um, Because at that point, I was done reporting. I quit that. Um, and the only other thing I had was Trenton Thunder. And luckily, their schedules were opposite, pretty much. So when Trenton Thunder had games, Phillies didn't. They were away. And then it went back and forth. So I was available for every game for the Phillies. So opening day last season, they brought me on to work on the yard, the kids' wiffle ball field, because I was like, yeah, sure, absolutely. I think I was the only person who said, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> so um, I came down, and it wasn't even set up yet. Like, they didn't have a camera down there yet. They just had the board, and they had two channels. They had um, a logo, and then they had the game feed, and that was it. So all I did was switch back and forth between those on an iPad all day, um, (laughs) and I didn't have to do anything. They let me leave early. They were like, here, you still get paid for the full day. Um, And then they did the Phillies parade opening day 
right through the yard. So I got to be there, like high five all the players and stuff. My first that day working awesome. there. Um, so I started doing that down there as a director. And then um, they're like, hey, we also really need you to do camera. So I was like, sure. So I started being a camera operator at the kids' wiffle ball field. Um, wasn't my favorite position because you're standing in the center of a wiffle ball field with kids running around and you get hit with wiffle balls a lot yeah uh, which is not fun well i would be lying so i went to quite a lot of phillies games this summer <laughs> and my friend ian and i would just look at it because like we played wiffle ball so much as kids mm -hmm. we're like i wish this was there when we were kids like yeah we like want to go out there and hit dingers it's fun there's yeah. there it was crazy there'd be games i was working and there would be families there the entire time. Like, they paid for seats to be at the game, but they never went to their seats. So they oh just sat goodness. there playing wiffle ball I the mean, I'm game. saying that, but, like, if I was that age, I probably would do yeah. it, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, the parents could not get them to leave. They loved it. Yeah. Um. Well, they do a lot of cool stuff with it now, too. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I saw kids got surprised with Bryce Harper. Yeah. They were playing on the field, and mm -hmm. Bryce Harper, like, shocked them, and he started playing, They did, too. like, an alumni game last season where they brought in Philly's alumni to actually do, um, like, a game down there. So they do stuff like that all the time. I went to a game like two weeks ago and or a week ago, whenever that was, and um, they had a couple of the pitchers down there just pitching to the kids before the Which game started. Which is so cool. Yeah, and it's like so cool. you also got to be there for like the start of it and mm -hmm. to see it. Like, yeah, I was the first person to be a director down there, which is, is so, so cool. cool. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna brag about that yeah. when I'm there and be like, I knew the first director that worked yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when it was two channels and all I had to do was press. Yeah, I but hey, no. you were the OG. <laughs> yeah, it. that's true. Yes. I'll take that. I'll take that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, once. Um, because they didn't have a, a spot for me for graphics immediately, I started doing that. So the first, like, two months, that's pretty much all I did was um, camera op and director down in the yard. Um, and then as the season kept progressing, they were like, okay, you're doing great down there. You're going to start doing graphics more. So I got trained on that and then started doing graphics, like, a lot. Um, like, three times a week, four times a week probably. Um, and then once, let's say, probably beginning of August hit, they needed an associate producer. So it was a brand new position again. Um, they never had one before, but they found a need for it. And me and another colleague of mine got picked to be associate producers because I did okay in my other positions. <laughs> um, so instead of being there during the game, I would get there five hours before the game starts and turn on the whole control room, um, figure out the stats for the players, come up with fun facts. If you ever go, you'll see um, on the Jumbotron, um, you'll see their headshot, and then it'll flip to a fun fact about them. The associate producer comes up with those fun facts. Um, so I did a lot of that. Um, I got the line score set up, so I had all that going on, the sponsors, a lot of little things um, that helped other positions pretty mm -hmm. much. So I was, as an associate producer, I was there to make sure the other positions were ready to go before they came in, pretty much. Um, so in total, I've had four different positions at the Phillies in one season uh, when I was really just hired to do one. Um, but I was so eager. I was like, yes, I'll do that. Yes, I'll do that. Yes, I'll do that. I'll do whatever they wanted because it was like my dream job and it was exactly what I wanted to do. And I feel like that's something like professors always say is like be willing to like yes. jump at opportunities. And you're quite literally like one of the best examples of that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it ended up working in my favor because – um, I got surprised one of the last games of the season, I got employee of the month, um, which was like the coolest experience of my life because I got to go onto the field. They announced my name, Dan Baker announced my name over fan of vision. The uh, Philly fanatic came down, put his shirt over my head as they like announced <laughs> it and gave me a hug. Um, I probably would have fainted. Yeah. It's like, honestly, like the most memorable moment of my life was getting, <laughs> it was so Aww. cool. It was very cool getting employee of the month there. Yeah. Yeah. So, a, like a huge theme that I also picked out of that entire story mm -hmm. is to definitely like stay in good terms with your contacts from yes. college. Yes. Yes. Even now I've been out of school for almost two years, two years. Yeah. Yeah. Two, 17. <laughs> um, and I'm still in contact with them regularly because what if God forbid something doesn't work out at this job or something and I need help down the line or I have a student who really wants to get in somewhere that they have a connection to. Um, keeping all the connections that I made in college and even the connections I'm making here and all my other jobs, keeping in contact with them in a good standing can only be beneficial, you know? So it's so important after you graduate to keep in contact with everyone you worked with because they're the ones who are going to be helping you get jobs after yeah, here. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. 
No, I mean, I think that's really important because I, I talk to a lot of students that, you know, don't want anything to do with getting involved or, mm -hmm. you know, going see, even going to, like, see professors during office hours can just get them to remember your name. Yep. And they don't want anything to do with that. And then they graduate and they're like, oh, well. Right. Like, what do I do now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, well, why didn't you build up more of a professional relationship with these people? Exactly. Like, get a job just like that, but you, mm -hmm. but you didn't. You didn't. So. Yeah. Well, I got lucky at Rowan because... So the television professor um, needed a, what's the word? Teaching assistant. Um, so because I stayed after so much in TV class to learn extra and whatever, I got picked to be a student worker there. Um, so I was running what they called um, labs in the studio. So if you were taking TV production at Rowan, you had to do separate labs outside of class wow. to be tested on the switcher, on the audio board. It wasn't in class. You had to come to a student worker and they would test you on these things. And I would report back to the teacher how they wow. did. Yeah. So I ran all of those things. So I had to know how to do switcher. I had to know how to do audio yeah. board. I got special training from um, that professor as well as um, there's a guy at Rowan who has pretty much my exact position at Rowan. So he trained me. Um, and so having that connection and being his assistant really helped solidify <laughs> that relationship and helped me get all these jobs that I did get. Well, I was going to say, too, uh, another thing I've noticed is, like, everything you've done has built upon, like, yeah. what you're doing so nicely. Mm -hmm. And, like, each job or each stop that you've made mm -hmm. kind of gave you something that would help you with the next one. Right. Which is really awesome. Right. Absolutely. That's why every... Thing I was ever offered to do in this field I took it immediately because I was like this can only benefit me down the line I'm only going to learn more it's only going to help me in future jobs and it has especially in this position I'm in now at Stockton it's kind of an accumulation of all of the jobs I've done previously yeah um all coming together especially now that I'm teaching students or assisting students and helping them with their assignments and learning the equipment um I wouldn't know all of this stuff if I didn't have the Phillies, if I didn't have Trenton Thunder, if I didn't have that student position at Rowan. All of those things kind of came together to help me get this bigger position. Yeah, well, I was going to say, it's kind of a nice segue. Why don't we bring it to the present with <laughs> yeah. you getting hired by Stockton? So, Yeah, so I got hired here. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got hired in November of last year, so it's been almost a year now. Um, and... It's been great. I, when I saw this job posting, I immediately was like, this is it. This is what I want to do. Um, because when I was at Rowan, like I said, there was a guy who worked there who had the same position as me pretty much, um, which I kind of came to find out later. It's literally the exact same position. Um, <laughs> he, I went to him for literally everything as a student there. He helped me with everything. If I was like late editing or something, he would show me how to edit. He would teach me. He would take extra time to show me how to do things that they didn't have time to teach us in class. If I wanted to stay late and learn the graphic system, he stayed and helped me learn the graphic system. Um, and that meant so much to me. And I took so much um, experience from that that I wanted to be that for other people. So when I saw that position open up for this position, the liaison position, I read the description and it was literally exactly what I wanted to do. It was like, you'll assist students with SSTV and with the internship and uh, you'll be Mac lab assistant helping run the television production class and things like that. Um, it was, it like literally fit into a box exactly what I wanted to do. So. Yeah. And I, I remember too. So this was November of 18. 18. Yeah. So it was like, there was two people that worked down there, Mike mm -hmm. Zabriskie and then uh, Mrs. Klee. Mm -hmm. And like when I first got here, they were the two. And then Mrs. Klee retired. Right. So then Mike was kind of just like scrambling, doing a lot. Yeah. And then Mike was like, oh, they hired somebody new. And I was like, oh, cool. Like not expecting yeah. it, anything, like just not knowing. And then I meet you and like we're the same age. You tell me, oh, yeah. hey, I work for the Phillies. I'm like, what? Yeah. Like, and then, like, we were talking about it, and, like, you were on graphics at a Phillies game that I went to because it was Star Wars yeah. night. And I was like, what? Oh, yeah, I was, was like, yo, those graphics were lit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I forgot about that completely. But, like, it's it's just funny how, like, it all started because also, like, I was down there. Mm -hmm. Like we said, all production classes my last year. So I right. was down there four or five days a week. Right, yeah. So you got to see Yeah, this you were, like, the first face. student I really got to know in this position. Because I never left. Yeah. <laughs> the problem, um, like you said, you were like, oh it's cool she was my age whatever that's like been the main thing with this job is it's been a good thing and it's been a bad thing being this age in this position because I can't tell you how often I'm asked what year I'm in like as a student <laughs> I can't 
at, like I can't tell you how many times I'm asked if I'm a student worker and I feel like no I'm a regular worker I'm hired and I've had to show people my office so they believe that I work here <laughs> oh my goodness um, because everyone just thinks I'm a student because of my age yeah but at the same time it's because I'm around the same age as a lot of the students here I feel like it's easier to connect with students definitely because of that yeah yeah, yeah. no definitely and I know um when I started here I started last September in 2018 mm. 2018 yeah yeah yep so um I remember when Luke had like first met you and everything, he was like, you need to connect with her. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I have no idea who this girl is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, sure, but, but me being like the obnoxious outgoing person I am, I was like, Cassie Jordan, Jordan Cassie. Yeah, like. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he introduced us and then you wound up working for my internship. Right. So I like was forced to get to know you, which yeah. luckily I enjoy oh, good. hanging <laughs> out with you and talking to you. But, um, and yeah, I'm always in your office, like yeah. every day that I'm here. Yeah, yeah so. pretty much. That's yeah. like my favorite thing about this job is having students come to my office all the time. Like I always loved going to my professor's offices and like the staff's offices and <laughs> yeah. stuff. So being that for students is like the coolest thing to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we're pretty good examples of always hanging out with yeah. you in your office. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I like it. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I have, I have an actual like production question. Mm -hmm. So. You've worked in a bunch of different, like, studios and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I know that not every studio is the same. Uh, what is, like, a position that rapidly changes with every single studio that you've been in? Like, has the audio boards been different? Or, mm -hmm. like, well, obviously, yeah, they're, yeah. they're most likely going to be different. But, like, TDing or, like, floor managing, mm -hmm. like, are they all different? Or are they kind of just the same, just, yeah. like, slightly so changed? Yeah, so they're all pretty much the same. It's, like, if you can learn it in one studio, you can pick it up in another. Um, it just, it's just little things, like, different softwares, maybe. But if you can understand the basis of a position, you can understand it anywhere. Like an audio board, if you know what gain is, if you know what a level is, you know where it needs to be at on the... Uh, uh, the levels if you know that you can figure that out on any board in any studio um, so as long as you have that basic understanding um, you can translate that to any studio pretty much mm -hmm. but things like audio and TD they don't really change you might get more channels you might have more um, more buttons on a switcher um, depending where you're at um, I would say the things that change the most are things that include software like graphics um, so what we use here is um, Ross Expression. And luckily, that is the same software that I used at Rowan, and it's the same software that the Philadelphia Phillies use. So I got lucky in the fact that I learned that at Rowan, further enhanced that at the Phillies, and then when I came here, I already knew it. Um, it is a different version of the program, so there were little things I had to learn, like little nuances about it, um, but it was easy to pick up on because I had used it in other studios. Now, if I came here and they used a different graphics software i still would basically know the little things about it like you know how to put it in a channel and things like that but i would have to figure out how to do it for that software so i would say things that include a software are the things that change the most between studio and studio um but everything is pretty at least from my experience and all the studios i've worked with they've all pretty much had the same software so i've been lucky in that case um but i could imagine going somewhere new if they had a whole different program to learn it's going to, you're going to have to relearn it. But things like a switcher or an audio board, those aren't really going to change. As long as you know the basic understanding of an audio board or a switcher, you're going to be able to translate that to any studio. Okay. Yeah. Cause definitely <laughs> I, uh, I work at Ocean County college as mm -hmm. well and I, uh, do some freelance work there and they have brand new equipment. Mm -hmm. Like they have a donor. Luckily, I like, I'm so jealous of their program but they have a donor that literally donates straight to the like tv production and stuff mm -hmm. so they have like brand new cameras switchers everything right and the last time that they wanted me to td for an event i sat down in front of the switcher and i was interning here mm -hmm. and we had just like you just showed me how to bring in graphics on a separate separate channel and then like bring it in yeah and i was like so used to that mentality and they're like oh no you just press this button yeah. And I was, like, so confused. I was, like, wait, like, am I going to be able to go out in the field? Like, I don't know which yeah. one I'm going to use. Well, the thing is, too, with a switcher is there's usually, like, eight ways to do one thing. Yeah. Like, there's usually so many different ways to do it, and different places do it differently, but mm -hmm. it's usually personal preference. Mm -hmm. Like, the way that we showed you how to bring in graphics, mm -hmm. 
we do have a way to do it with a button. We don't show you that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for yeah. that. Yeah. You yeah. got <laughs> him. Yeah. So there's like a bunch. I love of, and that. Even in the t- television production class, we show them a completely different way than we showed you in the internship. Mm-hmm. So there are different ways to get to the same end goal. It's just understanding how you got there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. Because, I mean, when I had my TV production class at OCC. Mm-hmm. So I come here and then I'm working with people who had TV production here. Right. So we all kind of had like a basic understanding, but we were all very different yeah. with it. Um, I remember specifically at OCC, they didn't just talking about like technical directing and like on the switcher. They Pre, the professors preloaded everything for us and never really showed us how to do that. Yeah. And just like just do the basics, switch between all the mm-hmm. the channels and just bring things in, fade. Right. Like put bits. it in program, put yeah. it in preview. Yeah. Yeah. So like I wasn't sure if like I was behind when I came here mm-hmm. or ahead. I honestly had no, no idea. No, because that's but. pretty much how we do it in TV production here. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't do anything crazy because it is just a tv production one class yeah. you know it's not like a 500 level or something um and that's basically how they teach it at rowan as well the only reason i knew more there is because i was a lab um a studio lab assistant so i had hours and hours of extra training because i took advantage of that with the people who worked there the average student didn't get that you know so like i said it is pretty much the same everywhere you go like so yeah yeah no it's just, you know, just a question that I had because, you know, I mean, I've, I've worked in, I've gone to three different schools for production and each of them had a different studio. So I wasn't yeah. sure if it was like. Well, even like one of the biggest examples I could say is like, if you know how to operate a studio camera, you can operate a studio camera everywhere. They are exactly the same. Yeah. Um, because my uh, professor at Rowan was a director at the Phillies, he had a picture of our studio camera next to the camera at the Phillies. And one's a lot bigger, one's hundreds of thousand dollars more expensive, but they do the exact same thing. The buttons are in the exact same places. If you know how to focus on this camera, you're going to know how to focus on that camera. It's just being able to pick up on the little um, the little differences. But as long as you know the basics of all of the equipment, you can translate it. If you're willing to put in the time to figure it out, you know? Grind season. Yeah, yes. yeah, right, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question for you. Yeah. Tell me about Cassie during her internship. <laughs> Cassie was great during her internship. Give me a nice evaluation. I feel like you have to say that because you're employed. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I can't say much about it because I'm employed here and I can't evaluate students. <laughs> yeah. That's not my job. I'm not a teacher. Yeah, you're I'm right. not allowed to evaluate you're students. Right. But if I were, you did you did great. You were always TD from what I remember for the most part. Yeah. Yeah, and you were, you were good at it, so... Thank you. I don't know. I can't really <laughs> say much that. about it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like I, I always had panic attacks when, like, the audio job wasn't taken. I was like, ooh, mm. I ooh. don't want that. Well, but people who well, like I never picked audio. up on you having panic attacks, so I that's guess that's good. good. <laughs> I held it together and cried in my car. Oh, good. So. Good. good. We're good. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Jordan, yeah. what's on the horizon for you? Because, like, obviously yeah. of this job, and that's great. Mm-hmm. But, like, what else is up? I mean, obviously, yeah. you're, because you're, what, 24, 23? 24. Yeah. Yeah. So you... Yeah. Uh, more of the same, pretty yeah. much. You know, I've been here almost a year now, so I plan to be here a long time, hopefully. I don't plan on leaving this anytime soon. Um, hopefully, I'll be back with the Phillies next season. Um, because that is in the summer and it's lighter load here, I can still do that. Hopefully, uh, the Phillies win more games this summer, yeah, too. Yeah, Hopefully. Hopefully, that'd be nice. Shout out to the boys. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'll stay on the graphics position or go back to the yard or something like that, but I would love to still stay involved with them. So that's for sure um, something I want to get involved in. And I don't really know what else. I want to start working on my own projects. Um, like me and my fiance have been talking about, we love to cook and we wanted to start like a cooking YouTube couple oh my show, goodness, which is so please corny. Do it. Yeah, but we have to get out of our tiny apartment right now so we don't have room to do that or light or anything so hopefully once we get a house i'll start working on my own project i will subscribe day one okay good good or maybe you could help or something oh yes yes yeah because that's the one thing i do want to start doing is more of my own creative work um because not that i don't love what i do here but it's very repetitive like i edit the same show every single week um with the same host and whatever you know i'd like to make my own i feel like it's a little different when it's like 
you're hired to do something like obviously we yeah. like doing this stuff mm-hmm. so it's fine but when it's like your idea right your project that you're bringing all the elements together mm-hmm. in it, it's a, it's different yeah you get a little more opportunity to be more creative exactly and that's what i want i want to create something and, well you know. once you get there we'll be shouting you out on this oh good, good. and you get to come back on to promote the cooking show awesome if it ever happens we'll yes, see. <laughs> yes. It'll, happen. it'll happen also yeah. you casually dropped it but i just want to say congratulations for recently getting in oh, you. show the camera your ring you. <laughs> <That's crooked. laughs> yeah. um yeah so that's happening you guys are filming my wedding yes, yes. we are so. <laughs> Oh, leave it hanging. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's not happening till January next year, but I've been planning nonstop mm-hmm. and trying to get ready for it. I just got pre approved for a mortgage this morning, so nice. things are happening. Yeah. Whenever I talk to you, I'm like, well, you're just adulting so much. I know. Much. I'm trying. I don't feel like I'm an adult. You're doing good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> as long as it comes off that I'm doing good, that's yes. good. Yeah. 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 yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You, you seem very stable in your life right now, and no, I'm very proud. good. I'm glad it looks that way. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, me and Cassie come to you about stuff all the time anyways, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's good, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what about you guys? Do you have anything on the horizon? Uh, i mean like we do a podcast if you ever heard of it yeah yeah uh, i've been listening true. yeah true. um i mean i you have school projects to do i do have school projects <laughs> i have to do a mood piece coming up what does that mean i don't know okay but i'm gonna figure it out yeah i mean you did the project so you know what it is no i didn't she changed the class like completely oh good so yeah. i have a mood piece coming cool. up and no one knows what it is all right yeah well yeah. We'll, we'll figure, figure it, it out, out. yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i will most likely be in your office panicking about it cool, soon. Cool, so cool. yeah yeah cool. yeah yeah i mean okay i mean i plan on working on stuff soon but i've just wanted to get this like off the ground running right. and it's been very fun working on this so yeah yeah it's been going well so far it seems yeah you know yeah so. I haven't watched it on YouTube yet, so I haven't seen the video portion of it because I've been watch- listening on Spotify. Yes. So we appreciate uh, that listen, though. Yes, oh, we good, do. Good. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, other than that, I mean, I don't work on my own projects very often. But yet. 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 <laughs> yet. I'm not gonna, you know. Well, it's hard when you're in yeah. school and working on school projects. Mm. It's hard to find time. Yeah, you want to focus on school because you're getting graded on that. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tr- right now, it's like the main focus right now since it's October is just trying to figure out next semester. Right. Oh, God. Yeah. Hopefully get your internship. Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll see. I yeah, think we'll so. we'll see. I know, it's nerve wracking. I have like, if, if I don't hear from them in the next four days, I didn't get it. So I am nervous. But I, it's just like I need to know so I can schedule my semester right but then i if i schedule my semester they need to know I, it's this it's a wreck yeah my yeah. life's a wreck right now but <laughs> well, luckily you can't schedule classes yet so you have a little bit of time to figure it out right yeah i think registration's open like the 23rd for seniors so okay i have a few weeks but i don't know what i'm gonna do so i just want to graduate <laughs> <laughs> that's my goal well you're getting there you're yeah. close yeah. yeah you're inching the finish line almost yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, Jordan, for being on. Yeah, we of appreciate course. it. Anytime. And um, Cassie, why don't you shout us shout out where people can watch and listen? Okay, yes, yeah. so you can watch us on YouTube. Obviously, hopefully, most people are lis- are watching us. You know, um, you can listen to us on Spotify, Spreaker, and iTunes, and uh, follow us on social media as well at Freelance Network Podcast, both on Facebook and Instagram. Um, yeah. And follow Jordan too. Yes, follow Jordan. Oh yeah, I, I made you a lower third. So. Yeah, okay, so it's going to be on the screen I don't know right any now. of that stuff off the top of my head. Yeah, <laughs> so I'll let you know. Well, it's on the screen right now, so cool. you're good. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. give me a follow. Yeah. Yes. So thank you everybody for watching or listening, and we'll see you soon.